Question three from our exam paper. Is balcony furniture proprietary limited manufactures and sells one product, which is a balcony bench? The following data related to this product for 2016 is below, and we've got some information there. Now, we've got annual volume, which is important. We've got our selling price. We've got our variable costs. We've got two variable costs. We've got some fixed costs. Uh, and it says calculate how many benches in units and in sales dollars have to be sold in order to reach a break-even point in 2016. Well, my break-even, the first thing I need to calculate is my contribution margin. And my contribution margin equals my selling price minus my variable costs. And my selling price is 200. So I've got that there. Minus 60 minus 10. And that equals... 130. So my contribution margin is 130. Okay, so now that I've got that piece of information, I'll do it in blue. Um, my break even point in units equals my fixed cost divided by my contribution margin. And my fixed cost is. Uh, where is it? My fixed costs are up there, 200,000 plus 100,000 divided by 130 equals, trusty calculator, 300,000 divided by 130 equals 2,300, I'm going to round that up to 8, 2,308 units. Two thousand three hundred and eight units. Now that's annoying me, so I'm going to spin that round. Two thousand three hundred and eight units. Um, now break-even dollars equals my break-even units times my selling price. So this is two three zero eight times two hundred dollars, which is up there. So 2308 times 200 equals $461,600. Make that look like a four. So that's question A answered. Now question, okay, I can tick off A. Question B. It says calculate the company's annual profit earned in 2016. Now, my profit, I could do my annual volume. So I've got some volume up here, which is 100,000 units, which is a nice amount. I could do that 100,000 times 200, minus 100,000 times 60, minus 100,000 times this, minus this, minus this. Or I can just use my contribution margin. So my contribution margin we already know is 130 and then I'll just deduct my fixed costs from there. So contribution margin times um, volume minus fixed cost. And so my contribution margin is 130 times my volume of 100,000 Minus, we've already worked out my fixed costs are 300,000. And that equals, that's uh, 13 million. 13 million <coughs> plus 300, so it's 12 million 700,000 dollars. That's a profitable business. That's profit. So I can tick that one off. Now that. It, Coming into question C, it says Balcony Furniture is considering changes to its plan operations in 2017, switching sales from incentive-based rewards to fixed-based reward system. The changes would result in a reduction to variable costs of $6 or $5 per unit and an increase in fixed manufacturing costs of $150,000. 
calculate how many units would need to be sold in 2017 to earn the same profit. Well, we've got to calculate now another contribution margin. So my contribution margin for this bit, we've got a reduction in variable costs of $5. So my variable costs were $70 as you can see there and there, so my, uh, con uh, my fixed cost will be now, on uh, my variable cost I should say will be 65, so my contribution margin is 200 minus 65 equals $135, which is good, and my fixed costs are going to have a plus 150,000 in them, which it uh, tells me there is my fixed cost. So now I'm going to calculate uh, desired profit, so desired profit, equals my fixed costs plus profit divided by my contribution margin. And in this case we've got 300, uh, what have we got, 300 plus 150 is 450. And we want to make a profit of $12.7 million again. I'm dividing that by 135. So let's have a look. 450 plus 12 million seven hundred thousand gives me that. And I'm going to divide that by 135 equals. I'm going to make that 97,408. 97,408 units. And that ticks off item number C. And the last one, it says, would you recommend that balcony furniture implement the changes contemplated in part C above? Okay, so it's asked me a question. Now, I'm looking at this information here. I come in at 97,408 units. I was doing 100,000 units. Should I make this change? What do you guys reckon? Yes or no? 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 Anyone for a yes? Alright. Okay. So D. First question. Yes, I should make this change. Reason being is, if I, if I asked you, you were working for me and I said you've got two choices. I'll pay you $12,700,000 at the end of the year. You either sell me 100,000 units of uh, um, inventory or 97,408. Which one would you choose to do? Yeah, yeah, you'd want to do the less. And so we're selling less products for the same profit here. So that's why we're um, making this change. Yes, as we sell the same... Oh, no, as we sell less uh, units for the same profit. Okay, so that takes care of part, or first part. And then it says, which reward system has the highest degree of operating leverage? Briefly explain your answer. Now, here's the simple formula. Um, the, higher the, the higher the fixed costs, the higher the operating leverage. Now, in my first system, which was the incentive-based reward system, I had $300,000 worth of fixed costs. Under my fixed base reward system, I've added another 150 in there, so I've got 450,000 of fixed cost. So which one has the highest degree of operating leverage? Well, that must be the fixed um, base reward system. So uh, part, part two of the part D is fixed based reward system. Um, which is all you need to tell me. So there's a mark there and a mark there. Can you explain that again? Yep, okay, I can explain that again. The higher the operating leverage, or the higher the opera fixed costs, so the higher the fixed costs up here, mm -hmm. the higher the operating leverage. And the questions ask you which has the highest degree of operating leverage? Well, it's the one with the more fixed costs. 
So my first one was the incentive based system, I had $300,000 worth of fixed cost. The next one, which is the fixed base reward system, has an extra 150000 so that's okay. All good? All right, good question.